everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing a tutorial on how to create these quilted fabric trees. I shared them in my floss tube a couple of weeks ago and asked if you wanted to see a tutorial, and you did. And I still had a couple to make, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to go ahead and film the process. Now I'm not able to film creating the tree stem because I actually used all of them, but I do want to show you what I did. I took wooden spools and dowel rods. This size is actually all from Hobby Lobby and it works better than the skinnier ones, so that's what I'm gonna show you. And you can stain them with traditional stain, but you could also use the Tim Holtz Distress, sta distress Stains. Um, and you can see all the different colors here. What I did was I hot glued the dowel rod inside of the spool and I let it set and then once dry, I took the Distress Stains, and I did this outside to not make a mess, and I sprayed these inside of a plastic box, and then I kind of wiped in the stain like you traditionally would do, using a rag, and I let them set and dry. They did sit and completely dry for probably two, three days. I don't know if you would need to wait that long. I just did because I didn't want any of the stain to rub off. But if you're ever wondering if you can stain with your Tim Holtz Distress Stains, I'm here to tell you you can. I used Antique Linen, Walnut Stain, and Vintage Photo, oops, and they worked perfectly. Now here are a bunch of the quilt sandwich trees that I've already done. I am going to show you the process completely. Now I had a bunch of these done. I used a much, much larger piece of fabric and quilted it and then cut them apart but I'm using this triangle ruler from Creative Get Grids to trim down my trees perfectly. I'm gonna show you creating one tree, and that is simply because I only really need one left. You would do a bigger piece of fabric if you wanted to make multiple trees and a front and a back. I only need one side. So that is why I'm using a smaller piece, plus it's a lot easier to show you on camera. So you're just going to want to do a bigger piece of fabric. You can kind of figure out how big of a piece you need. I'm gonna use both a square and my triangle ruler, but I'm using some scraps of fabric. This snowflake fabric I'm using is very, very old. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say like 10 years old maybe. It's from Sweetwater Fabric, which is one of my very favorite companies. And then I have a cream for the backing and I have a scrap of batting. So I'm going to lay out the backing, my batting, and the fabric on top. I am leaving raw edges. If you wanna turn yours out, you would do this differently, <laughs> but um, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm gonna take some basting spray and lightly spray everything to hold it down. This is gonna eliminate the need to use pins to hold my fabric or my quilt sandwich while I'm quilting. Then I'm going to do the same thing so that all of the layer, between the top layer, pardon me, and the batting, so all layers are secure. I'm going to use a square ruler. You do not need this. This is only for the purposes of the tutorial um, to cut down my fabric. Um, to a nice even square. I'm using a nine and a half inch Creative Grids ruler and it just looks a lot nicer for the video but please know that I used a scrap of fabric and then I kind of evened it up and cut out my trees when I was done. I used, a, a, I'm not kidding, I used like a half yard of fabric, not a half yard, yeah maybe about a quarter of a yard probably of fabric to do my trees. And maybe it ended up being a half a yard by the time I was all said and done. So I'm using the 45 degree line, that's what I was showing you, on a ruler to draw a di diagonal line. Then I'm going to use the half inch mark on my Creative Grids ruler, and I'm gonna draw in my lines. This is completely optional. This is what I do because I can't sew a straight line to save my life, even with the tape from Cluck Cluck Sew. So, so um, this works best for me if I'm quilting and I want my lines to be straight. I'm using a friction pen. This is going to erase with heat, meaning once I've quilted and followed my lines, I will take my iron and I will remove the lines. I will show you that here on camera. But I am simply going all one direction with my quilting lines. 
Now quilting a half yard, half yard, <clears throat> excuse me, a half inch apart is a lot of quilting, even for a nine and a half inch square. I would venture a guess that the quilting is what took me the most time, <laughs> other than the embellishing. And then I'm gonna flip it the other way, line up my 45 degree line for my first line, and then I'm going to um, go ahead and draw in my half inch lines so that it is a perfect grid. I normally don't quilt when I do my quilting. First of all, it's always straight line quilting if I'm doing it. I always send it away. If you've seen my quilt, any of my quilts I've shared here on Floss Tube, you know that I send my quilts to Knot and Thread. But if I'm quilting something small, like a pillow cover or the trees in this case, I always do straight line quilting and I'm a huge fan of a diagonal qu uh, quilt design because it looks really nice. I normally quilt a little further apart than a half inch though. It's usually at least an inch, uh, maybe an inch and a half. But for a small surface like these trees, I think the closer uh, quilting really, really makes it look nice. Okay, so there's my pen. I'm gonna take us over to the sewing machine. Please pardon the shaking. I had to use a different mount and it's not quite as secure. Also, I'm using my phone and not my uh, video camera. I do have the back of one of my trees here and I am simply taking a label from Sweetwater. I belong to the Sweetwater Label Club, meaning I get a new label or labels from them every month. This is something um, you don't have to do at all, but I thought it really made the trees look professional. On the big tree only, I didn't do it on the smaller one, I put one of my labels that says some fun Christmas quote or phrase, pardon me, and then it has my name. Um, it's just a really fun way to customize and personalize your project. So I love how that looks on the back. And I will show you that again at the end. Now I am removing my regular foot and I'm gonna get my uh, quilting foot out Everybody's machine is different. I do have a new sewing machine. I have not tried quilting with it and I'm more comfortable with my Janome because that's the only machine I've ever quilted on. So I am going to quilt on this and I am simply quilting on all of those lines I drew. And I do go two different directions as I get started. So you'll notice I start going one direction and then I flip my fabric and I go back the other. With the basting spray, I find that my fabric doesn't really move, but this does kind of help keep everything nice and even. Once I have enough lines, I kind of quit doing that, which I think I left all of the quilting in, I just sped it up. And this is a lot easier to show on camera than trying to quilt that big piece of fabric. So again, I, I know I've probably reiterated that a lot. I used a much bigger piece of fabric. If you're gonna make a bunch of trees, and this is only gonna make one half of my eight and a half inch tree. So you're gonna need a much bigger piece if you want a full big tree. Um, and I just, I only needed one half left. So I made these for my friends, and then I also made a set for myself, which is what I'm finishing here. And I thought I had enough left over that I thought my daughter would like one for Christmas too. I'm sure she isn't watching this, so I figure I'm safe to say that one of these sets is going to be for her. I will show you in um, on social media how I packaged this. I know uh, one of my friends did share hers on social media and I reposted it, but I will share on social because um, the packaging and the gift wrapping, I suppose you wanna call it, is probably one of my favorite things to do. I love a good presentation. And so I always kind of work hard on the gift package portion of it, and you can do it pretty inexpensively and really make something beautiful. So I'll kind of talk more about that uh, when we're finished, but I'm going all one direction, and then I will flip and go the other direction when I am done with this. And you can see, even with this small nine and a half inch square, it takes some time. <laughs> uh, it just does. I do want to also mention my um, stitch length is 1.8. I used to use, so when I turn my machine on, this particular machine always sets to like 2.2 and I used to use that. And then I have watched Kimberly at Fat Quarter Shop talk a lot about 
uh, your stitch, stitch length and if you ever choose to press open obviously that's not a concern here but that it really keeps your project or your quilt together with a shorter stitch length and I have found that 1.8 works pretty good for me. Everybody needs to play with their own machine and look, but even doing something like this, I do find I kind of like that stitch length. I will do a longer stitch length if I want my stitches, you know, obviously to be longer and be a little bit more visible and not so tiny, but it is something to keep in mind. If you are a sewer or a quilter, you probably already have your happy place. I just wanted to mention that. Now, once I'm completely done with this, I will iron it to get rid of the black marks or the black pin marks. Um, the friction pin is not really made for fabric. I have used it for years though with no trouble. I have heard from some people that the, some lines can show back up. I guess I actually haven't heard that. I've heard other people talk about it. I've never seen that, so I don't know. Uh, for me, it works fine to draw my lines on. There are other ways to show your lines that don't involve this. This is really just kind of a quick and easy. This is a project, it's not a huge quilt project, so I feel pretty comfortable and confident that it's not gonna hurt anything to use the black pen. I guess what I'm saying is use at your own risk, try it on something first um, that you don't care about and make sure that you know it disappears completely. Obviously on this white fabric or this white tone on tone fabric, uh, it's not forgiving at all and you will see me erase it completely away. I love this fabric, by the way. You could do this in any color. You could do a whole bunch of trees in lots of different colors. I think it would be really cute to do rainbow trees for your craft room if you want to. These kind of match my decor and my theme, and that's what I, and they're also really neutral, so they go with a lot of people's, and it's one of the reasons I picked this fabric. I have been holding on to this Sweetwater Snowflake Tone on Tone fabric for years. I have more, <laughs> but I had like two different pieces, and I think I ended up using up the entire piece with this one. I'd used a little bit of this in a quilt I made last January with a fig tree quilt so long. So, um, I, oh, you guys, I think I forgot to turn the camera on because it's not in here. Uh -oh. Well, that's a super bummer. I, uh, wanted to show you the lines disappearing cause it's magic. I just took my iron and ironed it. I guess my camera wasn't on. I knew my camera wasn't on at one point in the tutorial, but I didn't realize it was then. So sorry, everyone. So I have my trees. Um, I guess I already cut them with my ruler as well. I'm glad I showed you the ruler because I, see now that that is completely missing. I've been having some issues with my video lately. I apologize, you guys. So that triangle ruler, I simply took my rotary cutter and cut out the, the quilted square. I hope that's clear. If it's not, can you please let me know in the comments? I apologize. Um, man, sorry guys. So anything you wanna add to the tree, Bef before you sew them together, you need to do when it's apart, if you're going to stitch it. If you wanna hot glue these, you could do that later. Um, that That is definitely an option. I did try that with one set and it worked fine. Um, it's a little easier if, because going through these layers can be a little tricky. Uh, maybe if I hadn't used so many strands of embroidery floss, it could have been easier. Um, I want to say quickly what I did for this for cutting this out is I took my triangle ruler. I showed you earlier at the beginning of the video that eight inch mark, I laid it against a straight edge of my quilted square. I took my rotary cutter and I cut that triangle shape. It couldn't be any easier, I promise, super, super easy. If you don't have a triangle ruler, you could draw out a paper pattern and you could use your scissors to cut it out. It does not have to be perfect. Uh, I am a huge fan of my rotary cutter and my creative grids rulers. And so I went ahead and went that route. I will say that sewing these on was, is sewing all of this stuff on to decorate is the worst part. The quilt sandwich is a little thick, but I love the decoration on these trees. So the big trees are decorated with some wood buttons. 
I do not have a source for these, you guys. I've had them for years and years and years. They are my mind's eye buttons. Do you remember back in the scrapbooking days if you were a scrapbooker? Uh, my mind's eye used to sell these awesome button cards with buttons and I literally bought a bunch of them for the wood buttons. Like not all the buttons on the card would be wood, but these were my favorite. I could probably go through my scrapbook pages and find more of them <laughs> if I really, really needed them. But I, they were always my favorite and I think I used every single one I had left. I've been hoarding them for years for these trees that I've made for my friends and then for my daughter and myself. So, um, but you could use anything. I, whatever colors you're using, match some buttons to them if you want to. If you don't have any buttons, you could make, die cut your own from felt or you could use something else to decorate. Um, use your imagination, whatever that might be. My floss is super long. It kept getting tangled, but we're gonna persevere. Am I tying them off at each button? Not really. Uh, I don't care what it looks like inside my tree. No one's ever going to see it. So uh, definitely that is a personal preference on how you want to do this. I was on a massive struggle bus. But that's how I sewed on my buttons. So there are my trees. I will do the other one off camera. And then what I did, we are going to put them back to back, meaning the pretty part is gonna be on the outside. I am not turning these right side out. You could if you wanted to and you wanted a clean edge. I've talked a lot uh, when I've shown these that I want mine to have that rough rustic edge. That means that the fabric batting and lining all go edge to edge. I had someone ask if the batting was cut shorter. No, it wasn't, um, especially because I quilted a big piece of fabric. There would have been no way to do that. I want my edges to fray up to the stitching line as they get touched, as they get older. And you can take your hand along the edge after you've sewn it and kind of rough it up a little bit if you want to. I found instead of using pins to hold mine together. I'm using these Clover Wonder Clips. I love them, they work fantastic for this. So I'm actually going to put together all four trees before I go back to the sewing machine and I will show you sewing them together. I know I have that on camera. Now I'm going to switch it up for the small tree. This snowflake is a Pashta Design stitching die and I've die cut it from some beautiful like khaki natural colored felt and I've got some red embroidery floss, some DMC floss here. I'm gonna stitch the snowflake to the front of the tree. I will show you part of this. This is, uh, the buttons actually are considered fast compared to this. Stitching these on, stitching through the layers of the lining, batting, and the pretty fabric on the front, you can see me struggle. I actually hurt my thumb and so I ended up, <laughs> I don't know that I show you this on camera. I have some little needle nose pliers that I ended up having to use to help me pull it through. And it's just, I think I have sewn too much. I kind of have a bruise on my thumb, so it made it hard. And I'm right-handed. I couldn't figure out how to stitch any other way. So there's that. I think I did not remember it being this hard to do this. I did this two other times for the trees for my friends. I might have used less strands of embroidery floss for their snowflakes, and I think that might have been easier. So you might keep that in mind. I used all six strands. I think that was dumb, but I, I'm just gonna leave it here. The finished result is amazing. <laughs> um, I love how it looks. I love that tan snowflake on the white on white creamy background with the red embroidery floss. I like the little touches of red. Um, I've talked a lot about the fact that I have a red and white tree. I have suggested <laughs> to my family switching it up a couple of, you know, a couple of times over the years. And my daughter absolutely is like, no, 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 we have to have the red and white tree. So um, it kind of is our thing. I do have a couple of other trees and they are different themes and that's totally fine with her. She just likes our main tree to be red and white. And I will say, I do love that tree. Um, I love the ornaments. So, you know, uh, the snowflake probably would have been easier to stitch. The other snowflake, I must have poked out a bunch of the little die cut holes. I didn't on this one. 
I wish I would have. So I'm only going to sew a little bit more of this. You can see it's a little time consuming. I would suggest uh, this be more of a sit in front of the TV and watch a Christmas movie <laughs> type of project. Uh, but it it's not that bad. I shouldn't make it sound that bad because it really isn't. I was very particular with how I wanted to decorate my trees. And these, I'm looking for my pliers. I think that's what happened right here. These are just, yes, I did, are the most amazing little decorations. Simple, it stays with the sewing theme, but I love the decoration. I think it really dresses up the tree. So, so cute. My other suggest suggestion, so if you don't want to do the stitching, or maybe you don't have a stitching die like a snowflake or anything like that, I thought it would be cute. I don't have any, and I didn't think I would get them maybe in time. You could go on Amazon. If you could find like those rusty stars in a small enough size, I think those would be cute attached to the tree in some way or rusty bells. If you're doing more of this kind of um, rustic-y Christmas type of look, um, I think these trees work with a lot of different decor, not necessarily rustic. I don't have tons of rustic in my house, uh, but I think that it would still be really cute like that or, you know, like some little red berry garlands. You could hot glue some decor on here. You don't have to stitch on. And as I mentioned with my buttons, uh, I had forgotten to attach them when I made my first uh, Christmas tree. So I actually uh, put floss through them and then I hot glued the buttons to the tree and you wouldn't know. It looks amazing. So you don't have to sew them on through here. I, If you don't like sewing or it hurts your hands, because I will be honest, this hurt my hands. I think my hands already hurt though. <laughs> um, I would probably not stitch the felt on. I would hot glue something. You could even probably find a cute little, um, a cute little embellishment at the craft store at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. I know a lot of stitchers get some cute embellishments at Walmart even. Um, grab something there and you can glue it on or leave it. You don't have to add anything. So just a few little ideas that I wanted to throw out there. If I had had sm small enough bells that matched my theme, I would have tried to put bells on. I really thought it would be cute, but I... Um, didn't have any, so I used what I had and I'm addicted to stitching with felt. Usually stitching with felt is not this hard. It's only difficult if um, you're going through three layers of fabric. So I am gonna finish this off camera. I am going to clip my small trees together. Again, the small size trees are five and a half inches tall. I just lined it up, my triangle ruler, with the five and a half inch line against a straight edge of the fabric, the quilt sandwich, and uh, trimmed around it with my rotary cutter to get the five and a half inch size tree. The large tree is eight and a half. So we're back at my sewing machine and along the bottom edge, I am going to leave a small opening. We're actually going to hot glue that shut. Um, I think you could probably use a fabric glue as well. It would probably have to sit a bit, little bit longer. I did burn my fingers doing this. I burn my fingers every time I use hot glue and I think I'm just immune to it now. But you could also put your dowel rod in and probably stitch, hand stitch around the base of your tree to secure it a little bit. I still think you would have to use some glue of some sort to keep it secure, but um, that is, this is just how it worked best for me. So you can always play around with different ways. I'm having to switch back to my regular sewing foot and I'm going to use my quarter inch sewing foot here. It has a nice little edge to it so it gives me a perfect quarter inch seam. And I'm going to start down at the bottom. I'll backstitch just a little bit. I tried to start as close to the center as possible, but I need to leave enough room Yes, for the dowel rod, but I also need to leave enough room to stuff it with polyester fiber fill. So it needs to be a little bit, at least like an inch and a half, I would say, opening. 
So and then I'm just going to simply sew around and you can see I'm removing the uh, clover clips as I am going. And as I get to a corner, I will kind of go slow with my needle down, I will turn the fabric and keep sewing and I'm going to kind of come up and backstitch and I've left a little opening. And I am going to then do this for all of the rest. Let me show you the big one. The big one is a little bit easier to sew. I They're all pretty easy. Nothing is too, too teeny tiny. You could do a whole, diff, a whole little uh, tree village if you wanted to with all kinds of different trees. So my only suggestion here when sewing on things dimensional like buttons, try not to get them too close to the edge so that your sewing foot bumps into them. I had a little issue with one and I actually had to go back and fix the border. It's when I come around here on the other side. It's totally fine. This is my tree. Um, you know how it is when it's your own. <laughs> You're like, nah, that's okay. See the it hit the my foot hit the button and uh, it kind of made it go wonky and I just about here I'm like, yeah, I don't like that. Let's just go back and fix it. And I'm able to lift the button kind of up out of the way, but I just needed to be more conscious of that. And then we'll go all the way around to the bottom. And then I will go ahead and do the other two trees. And I will meet you back at my other table to put it all together with the rest of the finishing details. So um, polyester fiber fill is a great thing here. My polyester fiber fill came with like a chopstick looking thing. If you don't have, if yours doesn't, I would suggest using some sort of pokey tool to get it down into there since you didn't leave a, we're not leaving a very big opening. For the big tree, I did take a tiny bit of polyester fiber fill. I'm lofting it. If you've watched my pillow tutorial, you want to loft it so you don't get any weird lumpy bumpy polyester fiber fill lumps. And you want to shove it to the tip. And then what I found that worked best, because I've, I did it both ways, go ahead and stick your tree stem in and fill around it. If you don't, it is kind of hard to get that dowel rod to poke through a very tight polyester fiber fill fit and um, get inside the tree where you want it to go. I want it to go pretty much up towards the very tippy top of the tree for stability and for shape. So my suggestion is to go ahead and, and shove that up there uh, or shove your dowel rod tree stem up in there and then stuff around it. And you will see me stuff from the front. I'll flip the tree over and stuff from the back so that it has a lot of fiber fill on both and it's really, really full. Mine are very firm. I stuffed mine very, very firm. I thought for the tree shape, it worked much, much better. Um, after I kind of get the top or the you know, the top of the tree, I do want to stitch, stitch, oh my gosh, stuff those bottom corners. So I'm going to go ahead and loft and stick polyester fiber fill into the corners and then shove that with my little, you know, pokey tool, chopstick, whatever, uh, to make it nice and firm. And then I'm going to continue stuffing. My rule for stuffing is um, stuff till you think it's full and then add a little bit more. You would not believe, I should have shown you what I started with. I wish it was easier to show what I started with and then what I end up with, uh, how much ends up in the project because it is a lot. It is way more than you think it would be, but I promise you will not regret it because your tree looks amazing when it's completely stuffed. You can definitely see it starting to take shape. You can see how cute it is. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love these quilted trees. I think they would be very, very cute in like whatever color you decorate with. So maybe you decorate in some beautiful, I think reds would be pretty. I also thought plaid trees would be cute. Um, like a, a red and black plaid or even a buffalo check or um, black, or if you have a specialty fabric like velour or something like that, or even like some chenille fabric, really, really would be cute. Maybe you have some old, I don't know, upholstery type fabric from something else. 
that would be cute. You could make trees out of pretty much anything. Okay, I do have my Sherbonder hot glue gun. It gets real hot. And I'm gonna put glue right there in the center along the seam line. There we go. And both sides, and then I'm going to squeeze. And some of the glue came out, and here's the dumb thing I did. So I wiped it with my finger. Guys, it's hot, don't do that. Um, actually, it's like burning my finger right now. <laughs> I'm gonna peel it off. I think I was saying ow, ow, ow. That's why I have to mute what I actually say during projects. So what I do, what I ended up doing, and it's so much smarter, the chopstick, I actually took it and I wiped up the hot glue. If you have a plastic chopstick, that'd be even better. I have some in the kitchen, I didn't think of it. You could wipe away that excess glue with the tip of your chopstick. I have some bows I made here. If you watched what my ornament finishing tutorial where I shared how to do a two loop finger bow, uh, that is how I made this. I did do it off camera. I will link to that at the end of this video if you want to see how I put that together. I'm gonna use the same technique for a single loop bow um, for my other tree. All my ribbon I think is from Michaels. Now on the spool itself, I put a little tiny bit of glue. We're gonna dress up the bottom of the spool now. And I am going to start wrapping this jute twine around to make the spool look like a, a spool full of thread. But the twine gives it some amazing texture. Twine comes in lots of colors. I will tell you I picked up red and black, thinking I might do some different trees, and I didn't but I do think it would be very, very cute in the future. I kept these very natural. I felt like that looked the best, but I love how this twine looks wrapped around the wooden spool. Something else I should have noted early in the video, vintage spools would be amazing. I don't have any. Um, I really, really want some. Um, I would love to do a tree type of project with vintage spools. So um, I'm probably gonna be on the lookout for some, have to check out eBay or something, uh, for future projects for 2023 because there is just no time for any more Christmas projects this year as much as I love it. When you get to the end, I go ahead and put a little bit more glue. That's the only two places at the start and at the end and you can see that I lay my twine through it or my, my jute and then I take my finger and smooth it because it just kind of secures all those ends there. And I'm just giving my, my fabric a little haircut where I notice some long strands. I do want it to be roughed up, but oh my gosh, you guys, I love it, love it, love it. Okay, let's go ahead and put the jute around the second one. I'll just show you that again. I put a little glue down and then I'm just gonna start wrapping. I'm gonna start wrapping it right next to each other. I am pretty careful with how I do this because I don't want it to overlap. I want all of the threads to just be right next to each other. I think it looks so good this way. And it's worth the little bit extra effort to wrap it around, tighten it up constantly, and make sure that it's all right next to each other. And as we get to the end, I will put one more little dab of glue. I do want to just do a little shout out for this hot glue gun. I love it. I needed a new hot glue gun. I bought this several months ago and it's what I use for all of my cross stitch finishing and anything like that crafting wise. You guys, it's amazing. Such a good hot glue gun. In case you're in the market for one. Okay, let's go ahead and stuff the small one. This is a little bit different than the big one. I guess I did put some a little bit up in the tippy top. For this one, I really, you wanna get that dowel rod in as soon as possible. It is much tinier tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to start lofting the polyester fiber fill uh, and then I'm just going to simply stuff, stuff my tree. And then we'll hot glue it shut and add a bow. I like the addition of a bow. It kind of hides the fact that it's not sewn right down there, plus it adds a cute decorative touch. I was pretty uh, conscious and aware of what ribbons I picked for my trees. I wanted them to match the theme. And I picked all of mine up from, from Michael's. 
I'm almost certain but all the ribbons I'm showing you today are from Michaels. But Hobby Lobby has a great ribbon. Um, I'm sure Joann's does. I've gotten ribbon at Joann's before as well. I've even heard people say that Walmart has some good ribbon. I have personally, I always forget to go look. Let, well, let's be honest. I only do Walmart grocery pickup. The amount of times they go into Walmart is not very many anymore. But I keep meaning to go check it out because I think that would be a really good option if you need a little ribbon for finishing. Okay, so once my dowel rod's in there, my tree is stuffed nice and firm. Oh, I felt like I needed more apparently. So I kind of stick it with my finger and then, oh yeah, I can see it's buckling. There was plenty of room for more polyester fiber fill. And then I'm just taking my hand along that rough or along the raw edge and roughing it up because I, I eventually want that to be kind of frayed up. I'm gonna stuff that down, gonna pinch it shut. We're gonna take our hot glue gun, put glue down in there, make sure it's touching the dowel rod because I want it to secure to there and I'm just gonna squeeze it shut and let that glue set and cool. Oh yeah, I did use the chopstick to wipe up the glue. So much smarter. That worked real good. And then when that is secure, I am going to make a little one loop bow to finish off this tree. Super, super cute, super easy. I hope that this has really shown you guys how I put this together minus erasing the lines and actually cutting it with my ruler. And I used a different ribbon on this one. Just a little single loop bow. I think I do show it to you here in a minute because I do have two more trees to make, but I will stuff those off camera to save you guys a little time. I'm folding the ribbon in half and notching the ends on this one. I needed to hold that a little longer, it looks like, to make sure it's secure. Oh, they're not even. Let's give that one a little haircut. So much fun. I loved making these. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I hope it encourages you to maybe think outside the box and try something, a, a different kind of crafty project if you enjoy sewing. Okay, so I have my ribbon. I am going to take it around my fingers. For a single loop, it's just gonna be a little different than the double loop. And again, I will link to the double loop video down below the video here or I'll have it at the end of this video. So if you wanna watch that, you can go to that part of the video. And it's basically the same thing. You go around your fingers, you go through the fingers, and then through the loop and tighten it. The problem is, is I didn't like any of my bows. It took me like four times to get the bow, but that's okay. Just pull it out and start again. My big tip for bows is to start with a longer piece of ribbon than you think you need. You will be happier in the end. So again, around those two fingers, push through the two fingers with that tail. I'm so sorry I'm so far down in the camera. Leave a little loop, come up, around, go around and pull tight. And the other video is much better, but hopefully you can kind of get an idea because this is just like a standard bow and I didn't like this one either. That's why I'm not too concerned about it. <laughs> Well, I did it, I think, four times, so there's that. To give my trees, so this tray here on my desk is from Hobby Lobby. Um, I, When I was looking for a way to do a fun presentation, I looked all over. I originally wanted to do like a wood tray of some sort, could not find anything cute and small. Happened to see these at Hobby Lobby and thought they would be very fun. They kind of have that rustic-y vibe that I'm going for. So I got this little tray. I'm going to put my trees in it. I got a tree farm candle from um, a candle company that I'm really loving. I think it's Antique Candle Co. if I'm not mistaken. I will try to link it down in the description if that's correct. I'll find out what it is and I'll link it for sure. Uh, but it's called Tree Farm so it, it even has that Christmassy smell and I'm sticking that into the tray for gift giving. I did give um, some little snowman bags that I stamped uh, that have some fun projects in them uh, for my friends. For Peyton, I'm not doing that. 
I'm going to, and then I have some jingle bells that are too, were too big for the trees, but I thought they were a fun embellishment that I'm going to put a little ribbon on. And I'm going to tuck those in with some filler. So just some paper shred filler in the tray. And then I'll cello wrap the whole thing. And I will show you a picture of that again on social media. Perfect little bow. I just love everything about these trees. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And again, I'll just show you some more photos here at the end. I'm a big fan of like trays and baskets and things to give gifts in that could be used for something else after the gift is given, um, but make a really pretty presentation. And I love cello wrap. Uh, I'm not going to do the cello wrap here on camera, but I, I will wrap the cello around. I'll put a nice bow and then I made a ornament out of snowman beads with a tassel that I'm going to dangle from there to just finish it off, which is um, what I did for my friends as well. So I will be showing that. So I'll pull the tray in and kind of show you. It's nice and shallow. The It's not super even. So if you see that the trees wobble, these trees actually stand up really, really well. They stand up on their own just fine. This tray is just not straight and even along the bottom. So I would recommend uh, the paper shred <laughs> really helps hold them nice. So I like to just put, because you can see my trees don't want to stand up. So I put a couple of trees on one side, I put the candle over on the left, and then I fill it with paper shred, the jingle bells, and cello wrap it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm kind of irritated that my tray is uh, <laughs> wonky and wobbly. You can see my tree standing up just fine, not in the tray. Thank you guys so much for joining me for the Quilted Tree tutorial. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please leave any comments you have or questions down in the comments below the video here, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.